Part 1. The Stolen Bride by Eve and Philip Treasure walked up the aisle, then stood before the priest. He turned to look down the aisle as the flower girls threw rose petals in preparation for Sunny to walk down the aisle. Sunny walked down the aisle shortly after the flower girls. She was wearing the most magnificent dress and looked stunning in it. She held hands with Treasure as she stood before the priest as well. The priest began, speaking, of, speaking about love and the bonding of two souls. The priest looked between Treasure and Sunny as his speech continued. Treasure gently squeezed Sunny's hand. Sunny gave him a loving grin. And to show that love we place upon each other's hands the everlasting, never-ending circle to symbolize eternal love, he gestured to the rings, and Treasure put a ring on Sunny's finger. She put the other ring on his. The priest smiled. Do you, Treasure Hunter, take Sunny to be your lawfully wedded wife? He looked into her eyes. I do. Do you, Sunny Solar Rings, take Treasure to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Whosoever wishes that this union not take place, speak now or forever hold your peace. Treasure had a faint worry, and he held Sonny's hand tightly. Someone in the audience raised their hand, and everyone gasped. Treasure looked at the, pus at the person. The priest raised his eyebrows. That's the first time I've ever had that happen. Sonny looked scared and hugged him tightly. Who, who is that treasure? I, I don't know. The man stood. Treasure hunter, how lovely to see you again. And Sonny, such a pleasure. I, I'm scared. What's he gonna do? Sonny, you may not remember me, but I'm pretty sure treasure does. He looked at the man in confusion. I've never seen you before. The man chuckled. That dream you had? The one where your eyes flashed? Treasure began a cold sweat. You... you did that to me? Everyone seemed distant as the man laughed. Yes, you are special, Sonny. You have the potential to do what I can do. That is why you never got the same dream as Treasure. You will be able to entrance people to do your bidding. Leave him, and we can walk. And we can walk towards a better world. Treasure clenched a fist, wishing him to be toothless by his hand. Sunny was speechless and clung to Treasure as a sign of not wanting to go. The man looked furious at her sign. If you don't reconsider, this will not be an option. Treasure thought, wondering about how to make this, si this situation any better than it was. Sonny was clinging to him. He was facing someone who could hypnotize people, and he was not armed. He whispered to her, Sonny, do you want to run or fight? Sonny was still speechless, but she mouthed, fight. Treasure held her close then suddenly loosened her grip. Then he ran at the man. The man disappeared out of thin air. Then Sonny screamed. The man had her in his arms and, grinned, and grinned evilly. Ta-ta, treasure, he said. Treasure turned and his blood froze. He ran towards the man and Sonny, his hand outstretched. No, Sonny! The man disappeared with an evil laugh in the faint echo of Sonny's cry for treasure. A piece of paper was left on the ground. Treasure ran to the paper, unfolding it with shaking hands. His palms drenched the paper, and his nails dug into the paper, threatening to tear it. His eyes, waters and his eyes watered, and his throat burned. He struggled to see what words, threats, or taunts the paper held. The paper said, if she falls in love with me, she will not remember you. But if she refuses me, she will be returned with a curse. A curse makes 
the curse makes her ugly and unattractive at all. If you can live with her for a month, she will go back to normal. Treasure almost ate the paper. His rage coughed, coughed forth bellows and wails that died quickly to sobs and tears. He wanted her back, wanted to nail the man's skull to a stake and burn it. Sonny, come back! Treasure gasped and choked down his strange mix of mix of mindless hate and withering sorrow. Sonny, he looked where they vanished. I'm coming for you. End of part one.